we're going to look at graphing simple rational functions. Our rational function we need to divide first. Well, remember that rational has a root word of ratio, and ratio means a fraction. So we're going to be looking at functions that are in fractional form. We're going to be starting with simple ones, so we won't get into ones that are too complex yet. That will come later. The first one we're going to look at is called the hyperbola, and it is our parent function when we have it written as y equals 1 over x, because that's the simplest one we can get. If I were to ask you to graph this hyperbola, we would do a table of values and then end up plotting our points. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the points negative 5, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1 half, 0, 1 half, 1, 2, and 5. Now I picked quite a few points because I'm not really sure what my graph's going to look like, so I want to make sure I have a lot of data points. When I find the values, I plug each one of these in there. So 1 divided by negative 5 is negative 0.2. 1 divided by negative 2 is negative 0.5. And continue doing each one of those. Now when you filled in your table of values, you should have run across a problem right here. When you plug 0 in there. And that problem has to deal with our domain restrictions. I cannot divide by 0. So I am not allowed to have 0 in my domain, which means I do not have that value. So for my hyperbola here, my domain would be all real numbers except for 0. When I go to plot those points, I'm going to end up getting a graph that looks like this. Now let's go back to this x equals 0. That value we can't have. Notice what's happening on the negative side of my graph. As I get closer to 0, my graph is coming downward. Now one thing you have to realize is it will never touch this line right here where x is equal to 0 because that's an impossible value for me to have for this equation. This line is called an asymptote. An asymptote is a line that your graph approaches. And for this particular one, that line is the line x equals 0 because we can approach it. We can get really, really close to it but I can never actually touch that particular line in this problem because I can't have 0 for my hyperbola. Now if you look at the positive side of my graph, as x gets closer and closer to 0, see how it's just getting bigger and bigger? Same thing. I can't actually touch it, but I'll get really, really close. Now the reason that the positive side is going up towards positive infinity is think about um, what the value of 1 divided by 0 0.00001 is. And if you're not sure, go ahead and type that into your calculator and you're going to see a really large number there. That's an indication that we're going up towards positive infinity. Now if I were to do the same thing and divide by negative 0 0.0001, which is really close to having x be 0, but it's just not quite, I'm going to have a really large negative number. So that's why we approach negative infinity on the left side. Now as you look at this hyperbole, you might also notice another asymptote. And that is this line right here. This would be a horizontal asymptote. And our horizontal asymptote comes from our range or our y values. And the reason we have a horizontal asymptote at 0 is because if I set up 0 is equal to 1 divided by x, solve that for x, so I have x uh, multiplied by x on both sides, I have x times 0 is equal to 1. Well, x times 0 is 0, so I end up with 0 equals 1. That is impossible to have. I will never, ever be able to get this y value equal to 0 for my problem. So I have another asymptote here, a line that my graph approaches, but it's not going to ever touch. And for this particular one, notice on the positive side, it says x is getting bigger. So if I were to take 1 divided by 10,000, you're going to get a really small number. It's not going to be 0, but it's going to be really close to 0. So this is approaching that line 0, but it doesn't get to touch it. We'll be using asymptotes in this entire section when we do the graphing. We have two special cases that we're going to be working with today. Our first one has the form y equals a divided by the quantity x minus h plus k. Now a, h, and k will all be numbers, and they each do particular things. Now a, if a is greater than 0, 
your branches of your graph are going to be essentially in quadrants one and three. Now remember our quadrants start in the top right corner and then go counterclockwise around. So if A is greater than zero, our branches are going to be over here in quadrants one and quadrants three for the most part because our graphs can be shifted so they can cross over into other quadrants, but in general they will be in one and three. Now if A is less than zero, then we're going to get our branches to be down here in quadrants four and quadrants two. H gives us our vertical asymptotes and that comes back to our domain. If we have x equals h in our denominator, remember we can't divide by zero, so if we set um, x minus h equal to zero, add h to both sides, and we have this value that we are not allowed to have as our domain, well that is actually our vertical asymptote. So when you have this setup, your vertical asymptote is automatically going to be x equals h, but you have to remember to look at the opposite sign of it. And k does a nice thing for us also, it just tells us what our horizontal asymptote is. And the reason k ends up being our horizontal asymptote is because this value right here, you will never be able to get that to be equal to zero. Because it might look like um, 2 divided by x plus 3 plus 5. Well, our a is 2, so that would tell us we're going to be in quadrants 1 and 3 for our branches. Our vertical asymptote would be at x equals negative 3, and our horizontal asymptote would be y is equal to 5. The reason we will automatically have this number be our horizontal asymptote is because this value right here will never be able to be set equal to 0. If you did try to set that equal to 0 and solve it, you need to multiply both sides by the quantity x plus 3, and you end up with 2 is equal to 0 times the quantity x plus 3. Well, 0 times anything is 0, so you end up getting 2 equals 0. It's not true. So we can't get this to be equal to 0, which means we won't ever be able to get just this number here, because to get a 5 for our y value, we would have to have 0 plus 5, and that's not going to happen. Our second setup is a little bit different. This one we have y is equal to ax plus b all divided by cx plus d. This one a little bit simpler. Our vertical asymptotes are the x values that make your denominator equal to zero. Now these can be any variety of x values. What you'll do each time is take your denominator, set it equal to zero, and then solve it. So x can be pretty much anything for that. And then our horizontal asymptotes are going to be the line y equals a divided by c. Now notice that a and c are the coefficients attached to our x. We'll do some examples of these. Okay, when we actually get into graphing, it's basically a three-step process. The first thing we need to do is draw our asymptotes. And I want you to use a dotted line because they're not actually part of your graph, but they're more of a reference point. They're a guideline. You always have to consider vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So your vertical asymptotes are the values that you can't have in your domain, and when we're dealing with our rational functions, it pretty much comes from dividing by zero. And then our horizontal asymptotes are the values that you can't have in your range. Second thing you're going to do, so once you get your asymptote sketched, you're going to do a table of values. And you're going to do your table of values based off of where your vertical asymptote is. And what I mean by that is, let's say we have a graph and we have a vertical asymptote up here at 2. Well, you need to pick points to the right side of 2, so you might want to pick 3, 4, 5, and 6, and you need to pick points to the left side of 2. So you might want to pick 1, 0, and negative 1. If your asymptote were down here at negative 5, you would need to pick points to the left side of negative 5, so negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, and to the right side of negative 5. So you always want to use your vertical asymptote as a guideline for your table of values. Once you get your table of values, you plot your points, then you're going to sketch your smooth curve. So here's going to be our first crack at it. We're going to graph this equation right here, and then we're going to state the domain and the range. Now, we want to first identify which setup this is. 
And if you look back at that previous slide, it matches the y equals a divided by x minus h plus k setup. Our a is negative 2, our k is the plus 1, and our h is right down here in our denominator. So as we go through and look at what each one does, since a is negative, it's less than zero, that tells us that we're going to be primarily in quadrants two and four. So we're going to be working in these two quadrants mostly. Now, first step to graph says to sketch your asymptotes. Well, according to my um, guidelines on the previous slide, my vertical asymptote is x equals h. When you're doing this one, remember you have to take the opposite sign though. So since our h here looks like it's a positive 3, our asymptote is actually x equals negative 3. And the reason for that is if I were to set x plus 3 equal to 0, I would have to subtract 3 from both sides to get that domain restriction. And my domain restriction is where my asymptote comes into play. So my vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 3. I'm going to go ahead and sketch that in using a dotted line. And remember vertical means it is up and down. And then my horizontal asymptote. Well, according to my rules before, it says that k is my horizontal asymptote. So my horizontal asymptote is y equals 1. Notice vertical asymptote is an x equals, horizontal asymptote is a y equals. So now I go up to where y equals 1, and I put in my horizontal asymptote there. So that's step one of my graphing. I've sketched my asymptotes. Step two says do a table of values. So I'm going to do my xy chart down here. Now, I use my vertical asymptote as a guideline, negative 3. I need to pick points to the left of negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and pick, oh, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 6 for my starting x values. I can always add more later if I need to. I also need to pick values to the right of negative 3. So I'm going to pick negative 2, negative 1, and 0. Now to find my corresponding y values, we do the exact same thing we always do when we're doing a table of values, plug it back in. So I will do the negative 4 with you. We would have y equals negative 2 divided by negative 4 plus 3, and then plus 1. Well, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, so I would have negative 2 divided by negative 1 plus 1. Negative 2 divided by negative 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 gives me a 3. So my corresponding y value for negative 4 is 3. Go ahead and fill in the rest of your table of values. Okay, here's my ta finished table of values with all the points. I went ahead and I plotted them. And then I used the fact that I know I have a hyperbola, so my branches are going to get really, really close to those asymptotes, but they're not going to touch them. So I went ahead and I sketched in my smooth curve, which is step three of my graphing process. Now before it said that since a was negative 2, we should be in quadrants 2 and 4. See how this branch down here actually crosses over into quadrant 3 also? But if you look at your asymptotes kind of as your x and y axis, respectively, it's still in quadrants 2 and 4. It's just that the entire graph was shifted to the left. Okay, the last thing for this one we need to do is state the domain and the range. Well, my domain comes from my vertical asymptotes. So my domain is all real numbers except, well, that vertical asymptote happened here at negative 3, so it's all real numbers except negative 3. My range, notice my range goes up forever, it goes down forever, but I have this horizontal asymptote in there. So my range is all real numbers except, and if I come back here to where my horizontal asymptote was, I see I can't have 1. So my domain and my range come directly from my graph, and they correlate directly to my vertical and horizontal asymptotes.